All right, I am looking for a motion of approval of the agenda. I move, move approval of the agenda as presented. Was that for a second? Yeah, moved by Wes, seconded by Terry. Discussion? Okay, Brian, we're ready for the vote. All right. And motion passes. Teresa, would you be able to read the school district mission statement? Certainly can. Thank the you. Brookings School District prepares all learners to be confident, engaged citizens, empowered to impact the ever changing and interconnected world. Great. Thank you. All right, this is a time for board members to and administration to identify any items on the agenda that could be considered of conflicts of interest. Dr. Willard, do we have any this we evening? We have no conflicts to present this evening. All right. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to address the board concerning issues not on the agenda. Per the policy, KD presentation should be as brief as possible. And we have none this evening. All right, moving on to our presentations. Um, I am on to the best award, which I get to kick off to you, Dr. Willard. Certainly, and again, for those that are present this evening and for those that are listening at home um, through our YouTube channel, the best award is an award that stands for Bobcats Exhibiting Success and Triumphs. And it's something that individuals are nominated for um, oftentimes we don't know who nominates them, um, but we certainly know why because oftentimes those nominations are presented with a, a narrative and this evening is no exception as we have the opportunity to recognize Carrie Smith. Carrie Smith started as a TA or teacher assistant in the high school special education department here in the school district. There was a need for a special education teacher at the middle school and Carrie stepped up to the plate to fill that position and seek her special education teaching license. After working two years at the middle school, she longed to return to the high school where she is today. Making this move has its own challenges as the high school has a different schedule and added responsibility that comes with writing the IEPs or the individual educational plans for learners. In addition, she is teaching a peer-to-peer -peer class that teaches general education students about students with disabilities and helping them learn how to work together and learn from each other. The general education students work with the special education students at peers in both social and academic settings. Considering all these changes, she has stepped up and volunteered to help in the department in a variety of ways, taking additional students on her caseload, coming in early to help with placement of subs and making sure subs have the tools they need to be successful, covering classrooms for teachers and giving up her lunch duty to provide a place for students who needs require a separate setting. The best award talks about exhibiting success and triumphs. And as you've heard me just share, Carrie has been doing this as she transitions to the high school and beyond. So again, it gives me great honor this evening, board members, to recognize one of our very own, Carrie Smith, as being a Bobcat best. Carrie, come forward. Wow, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woohoo! Boy, you have fans coming out all over the place. Oh, I thought you were going to be Manners Moose coming in here. Oh. Oh. Something happened. Oh. Okay, we got to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we and we we already approved our agenda and we can't add an item but I think that is worthy of an agenda item at some point. You said that picture to the district thank office too. Yeah. Carrie, thank you so thank much. You. Wow. We Thanks. are so appreciative of what you do. It's really important. Wow. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know that about the manners moose. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> All right. Yes, a reward. <laughs> Gonna get us back on track here. Well, thanks for recognizing that with yes, us. That's, that's always great. fun. Um, I love the peer-to-peer -peer class. I wrote down some notes about that. That's great. So, all right, we're moving on to a presentation from Dakota Prairie Elementary. You guys know the drill on the microphone, I think got to be kind of close to it. Make sure, sure you the pull green it in tight on. and speak directly into it. There you go. And tell Thank us you. who you are. Okay. Sarah Weber, principal at Dakota Prairie Elementary. And Sue Carlson, kindergarten at Dakota Prairie Elementary. Thank you. So we participated in a family-friendly walkthrough. So working with um, the South Dakota Engagement Center, um, we were able to survey parents, survey staff, have a parent of panel, a panel of parents come in, and then um, the South Dakota Engagement Center came up with a report that gives us feedback on how we can better welcome our families. Wow. And so um, the day was really fun when the panel of parents came in. We just got volunteers. We reached out, you know, through Facebook and through emails and um, phone calls, and we did get a nice turnout in the end. Um, PTA brought breakfast for the family, so that was a nice touch too. Then we toured the school um, and got to show off everything DP has to offer. Um, a lot of the staff and the classrooms, parents were able to go into there too. And then we came back to this room and the panel started. So Angie and Morgan are the people who came out from the engagement center, along with some staff, and then the parents sat in this room and went over things that you know, we do well, and then they went over things we don't do so well. And then they came up with this report. So I gave you all a copy of it. Um, but the biggest takeaway um, that we're going to work on this year is at night when we're having like a PTA meeting to throw in a learning opportunity with that. So when the kids come along, we throw in daycare, but a learning opportunity into that as well. And then um, when we're setting up different procedures for the school, like um, pick up and drop off is one they mentioned, to include them in that send it out a survey asking different questions, things like that. And so we felt really confident with it afterwards. We felt really good with all the information that came out. We felt good with this report. It's all things that are doable. Um, one is like placing a map halfway through the school, how to get back to the front. And I could have used that last year for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so so that it's all very doable and we're going to be able to do it this year. At, um, four, four key areas was the physical environment, the school-wide practices, the learning connections, and written, communi written communication and materials and things like that. And we always know we've been working so hard on communication pieces anyway. That was a big kind of, we knew about it, so it's just another area that we're going to continue to work on. Um, they got us this report in October, and then we're studying it, and then they'll come back and talk with us one more time, and then we'll make that'll come out of this that um, help to better some of the recommendations they had for us so they the parents organic raw conversations that were that of course made us very happy too <laughs> yeah. we kicked her out yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I had to leave the room, so that was kind of hard to not be in there listening. <laughs> but so the next step is we'll sit down with the team, Morgan and Angie, and we'll make action steps to meet, 
you know, the goals that they set up for us. Well, the report I read through was very thorough. I, yeah. I, I found that it really um, it was a great experience for the parents. Um, I'm kind of jealous of them. I'd like to have a walk through at every school and, and know more what's going on. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't mind being invited to anything like that, but I really appreciate everyone who worked on it and all the parents who, who came and gave their time to. Um, and sometimes it's easy to voice what's going good and it's harder to voice what needs improvement, but I, I think they were very honest about it and I think that will lead you to uh, improvement plans that will be um, better and help the school be more efficient and more um, conducive to a learning environment. So thank you. I guess I thank you both so much. I kind of have questions from a district-wide perspective and I think you may be going to hit on that a little bit. And then the other um, piece would be if there's anything, as I was reading through to anything from the report that you guys wanted to share with um, the other principals about physical environment as we're kind of moving on Madari and Hillcrest pretty quickly and those those plans and anything we should be thinking about. Um, I liked all the details in there too and a lot of it's signage and things like that but things to definitely think about as we are doing those two buildings. So thanks for being an example for everybody in the district in that way. Thank you. And Dr. Willard, maybe you're going to share this, but I just want everyone to be aware that this is a part of the grant that the school district is involved with, that we, were, the schools were able to have this service free of charge because of the grant that we're involved with. And I know after our last meeting, it sounded like several of the other schools are also going to do this family-friendly walkthrough, which I think is really a positive step for our district to have that at all of our buildings. Great. All right. I think we're ready to move on to board communications um, and looking for an update from the performance oversight committee meet this week okay tomorrow great and just a reminder that the performance oversight committee you're working through some of our state report card data tomorrow I believe and some things related to um, test scores and test things so thank you for taking the time to do that all right facilities and construction committee Wes, you want me to update? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, there's just, I always am like, what have we been doing? Because we've been doing so much. Um, so we are going to, we can state it now or in, and in general board member communications, but you'll notice that there isn't any action or discussion items related to the facilities tonight because we would like to um, schedule time with board members um, sooner rather than later to work on getting to kind of some approval of final numbers, final square footages, um, final scope of plan, and just think that, that we need to dedicate a meeting to um, that time. And so we have met again, we're, we're really zoning in closely. Um, had a facilities meeting last week, Clint, correct, Thursday. Um, and the principals are feeling really good about the plans that they've shared with the teachers. Teachers are feeling really good about the space. We've had tons of involvement um, from the special education department and knowing that those, all those OTPT speech rooms, everything is in the right spaces, accessible for students and families. Um, we have worked with uh, the city and have also been attending those uh, design review committee meetings on some of our land usage at Hillcrest and all of that is progressing uh, in a positive manner and our facility is sitting on a, a great space um, for that plan. Our timeline is still the same timeline that was before. Just a reminder to this group um, and everybody that sits on the calendar committee, that's going to be something that we need to be really attentive to and thinking about because our timeline does push up uh, into, I believe, Monday, August 28th. Uh, is that correct date to Clint? We, it's not for sure, for sure, 26, excuse me, yes, 26. Not a for sure, for sure, obviously all those timelines can change. Um, but just continuing down the road of things we need to plan for and things we need to be working on. Um, and nothing has changed much from the plan that we last shared with you all, um, except some work with the city on changing some drop-off zones and some traffic flow patterns that we've been working on. Uh, and we'll continue to work with the engineers on the team and the project on those um, items. 
and I will turn it over to my partner in crime, Wes. You know, it, it, it's worth uh, repeating that uh, we're, the schedule allows us that we can have school in the two existing facilities Correct. next academic year. Uh, this is a really important in our planning, and, and there have been some adjustments that have nece been necessary uh, by uh, parties in terms of the design and the, the architect and our, uh, to some extent the funding model, which we'll get into, but this is really important for the community to know that uh, we don't have to rent buildings and, and uh, do some things that are out of, the, out of the norm for next academic year. And our um, construction manager also has worked on the plan, the safety plans and talking about space away from construction and temporary drop off zones and all of those things. So those conversations have been um, fruitful and have started as well. But yes, it's, the goal is and is still looking like no disturbance to the current buildings for that current school year as that construction will open. And then just looking at probably some adjustments for that teachers getting into the building and all the moving. I mean, those will all be things we'll have to continue to think about and plan for down the road. But all of those have been um, discussed. And I know Wes and Brian and Clint have been working really hard and Teresa on some finance model items. And so that's obviously tied in um, to the project as well. Maybe we could just skip to that a little sure. bit. Uh, yep, and I'll come back to policy finance, and governance. Uh, this is uh, kind of like a, a, a travel log somewhat in that we're working on it and we're going to have some uh, um, summary meetings in the next, next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, we don't expect to have a, a fall of the waterfalls or anything like that. We've, we're looking at every option we have thanks to the staff uh, in terms of some ideas. And so uh, tomorrow we're, kinda, we're having an informal uh, dialogue on some of the options that we have uh, for financing. Uh, the project, which is uh, huge, because we need to uh, do this with a, in a manner that is uh, satisfactory and um, puts the district in good good financial health for the long term. And I, I appreciate being on the finance committee. I'm learning a lot. I, it's nice to have Wes as a mentor there, and I appreciate all all his knowledge and Brian as well. Um, I'll mention just one thing. I really appreciated getting the facilities um, subcommittee minutes, and I hope as soon as you get them, yep. you can pass them on to us. It yep. really helps I think me Brian know and what's get going on. Those we don't even yeah we haven't been on that right away. So oh. even just getting those would be a great yeah. step. So I really appreciate getting those and hope that continues. Yep. Thank great. you. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. Good. I was impressed to look back at all that has been done. It's good to reflect on those items about the work that the group has done. And it's it has very been impressive. Lot. And I really appreciate all the work that yep. has been yep. done yep. with all the people on in there trying to yep. get everyone on the same page. Yep. So thank you for that. Well, and and I appreciate great. knowing everything you've gone through yeah. and that it's not me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to be we're going to be really proud, and the community will be really proud of of what we're doing. So, and the are yep, the principals are all on that. Yes, they've been committing a ton of time. Um, the principals and special ed, and yep. many people have committed a lot of time. Okay, we just jumped around, which is my um, fault there. So, we've talked about facilities and construction. Is that a update on school finance? Um, and if we can get an update, update from the Policy and Governance Committee. Yes, we met last week and we were uh, pleased that Mike Jewett could be with us because some of these things involved um, travel and things that uh, affect them there. Yes. And so we do have the second readings ready for all of those listed on the agenda. And we can go through those more when we get Great. there. And um, also the first readings that we're going to be working on are listed for the next round. So if you read through and have anything for, for us, please let us know. Anything else, Deb? Just, there's also a list of the ones that are coming up. So yep. if, you, yeah. if any of the board members have you know, questions or comments for us regarding those, we'd really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, Mental Health Coalition, Deb. Um, I, I was not at the October meeting, but I do have two events that I want to share to remind people about. On November 16th, um, the QPR training is being held, which is Question, Persuade, and Refer. And it is uh, from noon to 1. Again, these are done via Zoom so that people can do them over their lunch hour. And I have done that one. It's on suicide prevention. It's the three steps you should do, Question, Persuade, and, and Refer. 
and it's very beneficial. So if anyone's interested in that. And then uh, the, the webinars, the parent webinars that are being offered through with Avera, um, the school district is helping to sponsor those. November 30th is the next one. And that one is on adjustment and grief during the holidays. And again, over the noon hour Zoom, um, you have to register at bhsnavigator at avera.org. Um, but that's available on our website too to check out. Thank you. Um, and then besides just chatting about that meeting, is there other general board member communications to share? I will just share that, as I mentioned earlier, about the grant. We met for two days in Brookings, um, the week of Hobo Day, actually. So it was a very busy week. Busy. But I just wanted to give a shout out to all of our um, teachers, administrators that were there. Brookings has by far the largest group that's involved in that grant. And I can share with all of the board members as well as the public that um, our teachers and staff are working very, very hard to um, look for best practices in competency-based education, um, and yet they're not um, pushing too hard to make it go quickly. They're making sure they're doing it correctly. So they're taking their time, they're taking steps, they're thinking things through, a lot of reflection on what's working, what we need to keep focus on, um, and so baby steps, but making sure that what we are doing is really what's best for kids. Great. And I just appreciated um, the enthusiasm and the work of, the, of our staff and teachers those two days. Are there, is that, that's another area, are there any minutes or things that we can pass on that, that we can get a better feel for what's going on? Or have any documents come out of that that will be going to the staff um, or that we could also maybe get copies of? There'll be a, what we're calling a playbook that's being crafted and developed right now, but um, that's still in developmental stages. But yeah, that would you would have access to see that as well. Yes. Um, we don't have a, a note taker, minute taker per se. I mean, it's it's um, we do capture some things in a in a summative way throughout the day. I can reflect back with our directors of curriculum because they've captured a lot of that information. It's just something I'd like to uh, have yeah. more and know more about and be uh. up to up to date on. But especially this playbook would be a wonderful thing. And if we could get it out soon, I think that now, would be. That's something that was, we talked about at this meeting. Yeah. We had intended they had, that that would be out earlier. Okay. And it has not been completed yet. But I believe after this meeting, it was evident that we think we're ready to get to yeah. that next step. I would appreciate yeah. that too. I think, yeah. yeah, it would be very, for everyone, even yeah. those of us that are involved. Because what that did was it clarified language. It clarified, um, you know, some of the different uh, things like the family walk through the family engagement. What's their role? What are they doing? So all of that would be clearly laid out in that playbook, which will be better for everyone. And I did say, you know, I, I put down a list of things of, after attending, and one of the things they said was, we need to publicize more what we are doing, what's happening in our schools, um, so that people are aware of the steps that we're taking. And so the playbook will help with that. And I did, I do think too, we should have a presentation soon, sooner rather than later, from our group that's been involved. So, and and uh, I do believe that the. Um, there's been a lot of talk about it, and I think the playbook will really help us move toward action of, of making it happen. And that's, you know, we really need to yep. get that moving if we're planning to get that done. And um, just, I have one question. Are parents at all involved in, the, in those meetings? Parents were invited. We've had a couple of parents that have come but it's more difficult for them to take, they, because they have to take days off of work. So we've had, this summer we had um, a parent at our meetings and we had one parent at the meetings this last time too. But that is one of the challenges. Um, the meetings are all day um, for two, day, two work days. Thank you. All right. So I think I have one more yeah, go question. Ahead. So I'll be going to the ASBSD assembly. Oh yeah. I did uh, read through the packet, and if if you read through that and find anything, it's on their website. Yep. Um, I'd be glad to um, bring up any changes that we see that we'd want. Yep. I saw a few things, um, nothing major, but uh, would be glad. You know, I want to be your voice at that. So let Thank me you. know if there's anything there for you. Sounds great. Thank you for attending as well. Really appreciate that. 
All right, Clint, is the plan for, I know Amanda ha, is the plan for Amanda to so, try to find another date. And Wes, I, I wanted to know too, like uh, one of our pushes is that we really wanna make sure that we are part of a competitive bid process for the facilities. And that is a very uh, intricate chain <laughs> web right now. And so getting our numbers approved is something that um, is, is an urgent, more urgent matter. Um, I don't know, Clint, if you have thoughts on how to get that extra meeting scheduled or what, what you've been thinking about on that. Yeah, we, we had done a poll um, for the f noon of the 14th. Um, there were a number of different conflicts yep. that didn't work. So um, we can run another poll to see if there's another date, date later that week. So I'll have Amanda do that. She was out of the office today due okay. to an illness. So I'll have her run another poll. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we want to try to pull out calendars yep. That's now. What That's I'm a thinking. little sausage making, but watch for... Um, something to come from Amanda. Um, I don't know how, how is everybody's next week? Maybe we can have Amanda do that. What does the 15th look like for, okay. And then I know Wes is gone too, so maybe we just. I moved my conflict, so. Okay, on the 14th you mean. Maybe let's just try to have Amanda help us try to find a date. Um, but let's let's get on that tomorrow, and so we can get that scheduled. Thank you. Thanks for taking time for an extra meeting. Um, at that meeting as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. Um, we will also uh, take a chance to review those school board goals and superintendent goals, just so we can have a little extra time away from the larger agenda to speak through those items. All right, moving on to administrative reports. All right, yeah, a few things to report that are written, a couple of updates that have come in uh, a little bit later that were done after the report was published. So I'll start with those uh, particularly fresh on the heels of the family-friendly walkthrough. Um, as Deb referenced, when we were at the REM con colloquium meeting, um, I had a brief conversation with some representatives from the um, family Engagement Center and I asked them if they would do a review of preliminary plans and they agreed that they would. They have since given me feedback over the last couple of days on those plans. I forwarded that on to um, our architects as well and I can share it with the full subcommittee of the board so yeah. that you can see. Is that Child Family Resource Network or different? Um, different family things? Engagement Center. Okay. Yep. So Lots I'll put a family, okay. family Engagement Center. That's who did the report and everything. And, yep. um, very complimentary of the work that we've done with the with the whole plans and everything else so um, certainly a good partner to rely upon and as was shared um, by Deb every building is signed up except for one and that's because they're going through a comprehensive needs assessment right now which may also equally incorporate the family-friendly walkthroughs, but every single one of our buildings has signed up for that. So we will be seeing reports like this. I think um, every principal was excited to see what type of feedback we can get. We know that our family engagement and family involvement is something that's really important to us as a district. It's something that we value. And so again, um, know that that's working its way through our processes as well. So I applaud all of our principals for stepping forward and taking full advantage of that opportunity as was referenced by Deb. It's part of the grant that we're able to access those resources for free and um, tremendous feedback. Again, I, I completely agree, Teresa. This was great, very comprehensive. Um, so uh, just to get into some of the things that, that are in here, um, and particular to your comment, uh, Teresa, about the associated school boards, you may want to look at an attachment that's part of my particular report. It's the position paper that has been developed by the large school superintendents. Um, we meet every fall and we develop a position paper. And in particular, there's a couple of things in there that speak to um, some of the emerging needs that we're seeing, particularly as it relates to juveniles. And, and we've had a couple of conversations with our state's attorney's office about um, juvenile supports. I'm 
reticent to use the word juvenile justice because everybody thinks of, of crime and punishment. And I think we're, as we've continued to discuss this matter, that there's a much broader perspective that we have related to youth mental health, youth mental well-being. Uh, and you'll notice a couple of key items in the position paper that speaks to that. So I'd just ask every board member to reflect on that. I think at some point in time, we probably want to dive a little deeper into that as a board, just to talk about that as a position for ourselves going forward and how that interfaces with some of the broader community conversations that we've had as well, going back to um, some of the search survey data, et cetera. Um, we uh, had three of us attend a an event titled Prevent, Intervene, and Redirect. And it was a symposium that was um, co-sponsored by a few different entities, including the Uni uh, Unified Judicial System, the Department of Social Services, South Dakota Department of Education. And it really focused on some of those tiered systems of support for our youth and how we can implement and apply those tiers of support. The good news is, as a district, those tiers of support are aligned to the whole PBIS, or Positive Behavior Intervention Supports model. And so you'll see that detailed in my report. I'd ask board members, again, to take some time to reflect on that and ask questions that you might have. Um, our strategic planning work is continuing in earnest. We did have a um, meeting with Casey. Uh, if you recall, she was the one that presented to us. and. There have been some key pillars that have been identified and are now being vetted through um, a survey instrument. We're going to be pushing that survey instrument out to encourage greater participation. We had, uh, had those surveys available during conferences, so we did have quite a number of parents that have filled those out. But again, we just want to have a broad base and we're going to find some opportunities for student involvement as well as we're going through those pillars and bringing those forward ultimately to the board and then building some metrics behind those as well. Also wanted to share that there was a meeting held in this room with um, the deans of education for South Dakota State University as well as Dakota State University with a few district uh, administrators talking about the need for teachers and filling the pipeline, if you will. Um, I think there's some real interest in finding some creative solutions, whether it's some alternative cohort type models that would help um, create a career pathway for our teacher assistants. Uh, Carrie Smith was a prime example of that, or um, a career pathway for a behavior technician that has a real interest in working in schools and with children and finding ways to help support through career pathways. Again, there seems to be some interest and in, uh, we're going to continue to talk about that um, going forward. So again, I appreciated um, the two deans from those two respective institutions taking some time to meet with us. It was very, very productive, I thought. Um, at the high school report, you'll notice the the point to the family-friendly walkthrough that's going on, or not going on, but that's scheduled to occur. Um, you'll also notice in the report that they are working through some things with the result of the whole swatting incident that we experienced last month. Um, one of the things that we have recognized or noted is there is um, an ongoing need for us to refresh and update and just continue to educate everybody on a common set of language relative to um, intruders and situations that require a response. So we're gonna continue to work on that. We also know we need to continue to, to educate community members and family members about and when you hear of an incident, don't flood the schools, stay away, let the process work because um, again, we don't want to, uh, don't want to create undue pressure on an already pressure-filled situation by having all kinds of exterior entities show up. And I know that's incredibly hard to say and incredibly hard to do as a parent. But again, it's, it's the best practices working with our police department. Um, when you look at the middle school report, um, you'll notice that there has been some intentional efforts to engage parents when they're working through some of their um, parent teacher student association meetings that they have created opportunities to teach parents. This was some of the feedback that we received as well on how to use some of the key tools that we have available in our system um, from Infinite Campus as well as Canvas and how teachers are utilizing that. We had a teacher panel, as you can see, that had some 
staff members just talking with parents. And then there's some YouTube videos that are being created. They'll be shared and they'll be linked through newsletters to provide information to parents. Again, just doing all we can to educate and communicate what's going on and how, how different tools are being utilized and better yet, how parents can utilize those tools to support what's going on in the educational experience of their children. Um, moving on to that or a little deeper in that report, you'll notice that there was the training once again for our annual uh, annual training for the natural helpers. It's a program in the middle school that really supports our youth. Um, and it's two day training, developing skills, of listening and identifying problems, helping to find some solutions and then equally understanding when a problem is too big that a teenager needs to refer it on. So the peer helper program is something very positive and I give our counselors a tremendous amount of credit for continuing to lift that program and develop leaders among our student body to help with that effort. Um, Camelot has the breakfast with the badges. They had breakfast this morning. Again, just know that that's an opportunity for anybody that's uh, the board members, if you're interested in attending one of those breakfast with the badges, um, you see the, the times that those are second Tuesday of each month um, and has an engagement from a variety of different sources within the community. So again, building that relationship with our law enforcement or other agencies, fire department, um, between our, our learners and those different agencies. And then you'll notice that through that report, there's also some time that was identified to really get to some of that, the goal statements and values that are part of um, the whole broader view of the uh, competency-based work. And that was something that every building did. And that feedback was then shared at our REM colloquium meeting. And then from there, we worked together to distill it down and develop a shared set of beliefs that are all going to become incorporated into the playbook document that I mentioned earlier. Um, the, the, the report for Dakota Prairie, I, I smile and chuckle a little bit because uh, I don't know if you, you dug down deeper into that, but um, you'll see the little, the little letter that was written oh, by I Sienna. Um, Bobcat bucks are bucks. They're bucks that the teacher draw from a bucket. If your name gets drawed, mm -hmm. then you go to the office. When you get to the office, you pick a prize. When you pick a prize, you put, it, the, put the prize in your locker. When it's in your locker, then you go into your classroom and learn. When you come into your classroom, people might ask you what you got for a Bobcat buck prize. You'd probably love the prize that you got from the office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to keep reading because, uh, yeah, That's just in great. case somebody's struggling with interpretation. I got it. Um, might ask, you'd probably love the prize that you got from office the office. Probably. The office probably do it so then you can fell, feel, feel good, good, feel good. We can feel good. The whole school can feel good. Yeah. And thank you for all of the school teachers that have that of the Bobcat Bucks. Thank you so, so much. And thank you for teaching and all you teachers for all the rest you have done for us students. And always remember to be a Bobcat <laughs> so that you can get a Bobcat Buck. <laughs> thank you for being a Bobcat and make sure you're you remember. you remembering Bobcat Bucks. And that, me that means when you get a bobcat buck, then you are being a bobcat. <laughs> That's what needs to be in the Brookings Register. <laughs> so uh, from the mouth of our babes, I wanted to make certain that I read that one um, again, just because I thought it, it was a tremendous part of the report um, and it yep. just warms your heart. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got teaching degrees over here. I could, I love that. I say, that's we'll the best you. marketing plan yeah. right there. Yeah. We, we will get you all a Bobcat buck so you can yeah. be a Bobcat, all right? Um, for, your te for teaching and all the teachers, for all the rest you've done for our students. It's yeah, amazing. That uh, warms your heart. Yep. Um, conferences going on. We know we had great participation, and we'll get that data from our feedback that we have. Um, we know that there were... A, 100% sign up at, you can see in the Hillcrest report, that was mirrored in many of our elementaries. We know that as students get a little bit older, that becomes a little more challenging for parents to engage. But I, through the Monday memo, I did encourage parents 
um, to participate in all those events equally. Encourage them to vote. By the way, if you're listening, you still have one hour. Um, the Hillcrest Family Fun Night uh, is something that's planned. It's for November 17th, so we're really looking forward to that opportunity as well. And there'll be some information to follow. In the Madari report, you'll notice the golden trophies that have been created through the encores. Um, and I really appreciated seeing the golden keyboard or the golden uh, food tray. And, and again, it's the ways to recognize um, positive behaviors, again, through the Encore programs that are going on. And so, again, just a fun way to recognize classrooms of learners and what they're doing. And then for fire safety, uh, Mr. Vox, and I know he's done this in other schools as well, um, he starts out uh, without his gear, but then goes through the whole process of gearing up and teaching our learners about what his job is as a firefighter and the equipment that he wears and how he wears it and why he wears it and um, just talks about some of that fire safety. So it's great to have him on staff as a volunteer firefighter and his willingness to share that skill set with us and with our learners. Um, the Director of Curriculum Instruction, as we shared earlier, there is a meeting that's going to happen with the Performance Oversight Committee. Um, that will take place, and then from there, we'll bring the report to the full board um, at a future event. And then you'll notice that there was a reference, I hope, um, you, if you were given the opportunity that you attended the FOCUS event sponsored by First Bank and Trust, it was absolutely fantastic. The two speakers were, were just wonderful. and. Um, the encouragement that they had with a very positive message. I know we, we were able to have several of our leaders that were in attendance. Um, <clears throat> special services, you've heard reference before to the RDA or results driven accountability um, model that we're applying. And we have an action plan that we are going through right now. So we have coaches through the state that are going to lead staff through a process and some of the regulations necessary to meet compliance on special education. We know that that is a very compliant heavy um, component of what we do in serving the, the learners in our community. So uh, I really applaud Heather for her role in taking on that opportunity to help us get it better. And then staffing, um, Heather was an important part of that meeting that we had with the deans in particular talking about special education needs and staffing and what's going on there. Uh, the Director of Activities, a whole host of number of things to report on there. I'll let you read through that. I'd just like you all to mark your calendars for the upcoming Elf pro musical that's going to be happening. Um, kind of a fun opportunity there as we prepare for the holidays to come. And uh, besides all the results that are highlighted from the fall activities, starting to look forward to the winter activities um, going forward as we... Oh, as we do the winter activities rally. Um, next, we have the director of child nutrition. Uh, I really applaud our staff for all the hard work they do to ensure our kitchens are providing the safest environment possible and the healthiest environment possible. And when you look at the health inspections from this year, every building was 100% um, met the mark except Hillcrest was 99 and on occasion sometimes that's because of some hooding it's a, a very small thing so again I, I really applaud all of our our child nutrition staff for what they do we have continued to experience some supply chain issues as you see reported there by Laura Swear and she just has to be very diligent and agile in menus and we just ask for continued grace among families as we continue to make those adjustments relative to what's available um, in the technology, Director of Instructional Technology and Knowledge Management Report, you'll see that there has been some budgeting work already starting relative to technology needs and the equipment. Um, <laughs> there's some hardware items that are going to need to be adjusted and, and uh, taken into consideration. Um, we're also starting to look at some upgrades to our district website as a vendor change is underway. And so um, we'll be looking to make some changes to our website. And that will be working with a company called Aptigy, which is helping address that centralized location, singular location of what we're doing to communicate with and to parents. Um, so we're really excited about that. So watch for more development probably later this coming spring as we go through that process of transitioning our existing platform to a different platform. Um, and then eSports. 
It's uh, really interesting to see the level of interest among our learners in esports, and it's something that we know is a, a growing interest. We see it at the university level, we see it across the region, and so we are, are starting to examine and explore options there. Um, the Director of Transportation Buildings and Grounds really emphasized some of the safety measures that we've implemented. You've heard uh, some things in the past about creating barriers with bollards and, and you'll see that those are being installed and, and I believe they are installed at all of the schools. We've also, through the exterior of the building, did some very strategic removal of vegetation to help prevent access to roofs and other things like that. Helps with safety and security of the envelope of our facilities. Um, Director of Business Services, um, you see the bus bid that's going to be talked about later. I know we've mentioned that for a few months in a row now, and finally we have a, a bid for consideration by the board this evening. And then I know we've been posed the question and we finally have made it through all the nuances of our enrollments. And that enrollment number, I'm very happy to state, is up 44 students and um, 44 from our budgeted student enrollment. So that's really positive. We're 3,442.29 students. <laughs> and um, don't ask me how we get to the .29. That's, that's a whole case study in and of itself. But uh, you'll notice that. that we have five <laughs> students that are out of state. Um, one incoming from out of state, and that's for our project search program that we do. And we've had presentations at the board table about project search in the past. And we also have eight out of district placements, and oftentimes those are related to special needs. Um, director of curriculum for the K, pre K five, um, again, mentioning the, the focus event that took place. You'll also see in there some references to. Um, some things that are going on uh, with the adoption of an upgraded math series and how that is working. We're continuing to help prevent or provide staff development on implementation with, with the math series that was adopted. Um, so again, watch for more details down the road with that and our competency-based work and PLCs. Um, a lot going on with both of those elements as well. And then finally, um, something that, sh that Tana has highlighted in her report, um, both Michelle and Tana are working together to enhance their skills around um, assessment and data literacy. They're part of a group that has been put together um, through the South Dakota Department of Education to learn more about really making data informed decisions. So how we utilize not only the summative assessments, the state assessments, but formative assessments, those assessments that are for learning, not just of learning. So um, really excited to see what kind of work continues to emerge out of there. So a lot in our reports, again, as typical, but uh, would stand ready for any questions. Maybe at some point we could have a discussion of the esports and what that might mean in terms of um, I did Buster, but some idea of the financial planning, financial planning relative to esports. I'm I'm a little bit familiar with it. Haven't seen it at some college campuses. Right time to just talk in terms of what this might mean. a lot of other high schools are they starting esports programs and that's who we would be competing against as with other activities uh, interesting question um, I had a very similar question about how does this develop um, and right now I'm aware of one other real of one other large school in this in the state that is doing esports um, Harrisburg but when we look at the the league play, as I understand it, the league, and I know, uh, oh yeah, Are you Jason, gonna be yeah, the coach? You're, yeah, Are you, gonna be you, the co you, you bet. Ba from the back room the, to the front room to the east. Yeah, I was, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, <laughs> I was uh, on the webinar when we talked with folks, um, uh, VS Sports, I believe it was called, I'd have to double check that, but uh, Mike, me, and uh, two of my tech guys, Travis and Corey, were on the call. Um, you were right about Harrisburg. Harrisburg's on. I believe there's another South Dakota district. I'm not sure right now. Uh, but the, our, I saw the map of the United States, and it's kind of the Midwest. So mm -hmm. all the way down to Texas, all the way up through North Dakota, 
is going to be kind of our region. So our kids would compete against kids from all over that region. And I can answer some questions on it. Like I said, we did one about half hour webinar, but if you have any other questions, I can answer them now. I think the public knows who you are, but will you tell us yeah. who you are? Uh, Jason Just Smith, so director of technology. You can spell your name right on Jason there. Smith, director of technology. <laughs> Thank you. And I kept the camera off me too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, I think that's a good idea, Wes, an interesting conversation for a board meeting. And Jason, do you know, is it something that involves a lot of travel or is it done from oh. your site? On, all, all, on all, virtual. all virtual. So, so, so from what we asked, we asked a lot of those questions. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. I asked a little bit about how much, uh, you know, some of this is going to cost because a lot of those, you know, gaming systems are not, are not cheap by any means. Um, but no, all of them virtual. So they have, it's, it's, it's like a game. You'll have a home team. Mm -hmm. So Brookings be the home team, but that means they're in charge of setting up the virtual okay. room to play Harrisburg and then mm -hmm. they, and then they okay. battle. Yeah, I hey. like it. Can I ask an app did you question? Maybe you wanna stay in. I, uh, um, I know quite a few other schools are using that. So I've been checking out their websites and their apps and it just looks really great. Um, so I hope you feel really good about it. Oh yeah, I've I've been in contact with them for two years yeah. now, probably. They yeah. contacted us a long time ago, and oh, I've like, always kept connection with them because yeah. uh, their stuff's really good. looks really high yeah. quality. Um, and so I'm a little anxious that we have to wait so long to get everything going. So there's a ton of background work that you have to yes. do to yes. do that, and so that stuff has already started, and that's yes, why that we're thinking. Yes, that process will go through this year, and then we'll just have a transition period. Okay. They've they've done it a lot, so they can yeah. communicate with me on how. Okay. It's look. So families can expect different communication tools for the next school year. Is that what we're kind of saying? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Other questions? I know I'm excited about it. We're glad we could invest in that. Yep. Other questions from Dr. Willard's administrative reports? I want the golden lunch tray, but anyone else? This okay. isn't directly to, this isn't directly about any of the, I think sometimes just the way we talk, I mean, for parents and people that are watching, sometimes it's easy to start using insider language. Yes. And people, I mean, all institutions do it, but when we start saying, you know, RAM and this and that, I think it sometimes we need to stop and explain yeah. what that is because if we want to engage the public and parents and families, insiders know, but other people don't. And I think it's a real easy way for people to check out and just go, well, I don't even know what they're talking about. And the about. playbook hopefully will help with that. Oh, good. And I was actually asked by um, someone in the community to do an OLLI class, which is the Osher Lifelong Learning, on all the acronyms that are used by school districts. And Michelle Vandyweerd has agreed to help me with that. And I, I get that, especially for, you know, uh, parents and grandparents. There's a lot of things that are thrown around, PBIS. We, we do it at our board meetings, but, and, and all of us had to become familiar with it too, um, because they're new things. So that that's a very good point and I think it's something we have to remember. Yeah, thanks. So the REM is reimagining education um, and that's the grant that we are a part of. Mm -hmm. And at the top of the list is ESSER. ESSER, yeah. Because <laughs> last time, well, a couple of meetings ago I asked about it and the next day somebody said, oh, I'm glad you asked about it. Yeah. Well, it's good for and us as, as, as... told me they were glad. Good for us as board members to be aware when we're talking and thank you, Terry. And yeah, we'll continue to work on that and I was just thinking we need like a family friendly yes. board meeting like are we doing the things for that families to understand and and be aware of all the things that we're talking about thank you yeah let us know you can do a presentation all right I'd like to move on to the um, other uh, monthly financial overview and update Brian doing that are we moving on to the other communication discussion items sorry I don't know if that's in the printed or oh it's skipping it oh so the printed is different okay all right yeah we did have move that quite some time ago sorry everybody okay the other communication discussion items um, are the readings of our policy and so I'll go ahead and go through um, those so um, 
These are all info items at the top. And so we have a set in our second reading. And so we have the second reading of revisions being made to policy JHCE allergen guidelines. We have the second reading of revisions being made to policy JHD learner psychological services. We have the second reading of revisions being made to policy JEDB, learner dismissal. And we have the second reading of revisions being made to policy JF, JHFA, learner travel. All right. I'm, I'm just going to mention for those listening. Thank you. Learner, learner dismissal means um, the child being dismissed from school for the day right. or event, not dismissing dismissed them from, from the district Correct. for some reason. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, and these policies can all be found on our website um, and handbook to be looked at. And uh, again, reminder that they were all reviewed by the Associated School Boards as well as by us individually as members of the community com committee. All right, and then we have some first readings. Um, we have the first reading of revisions being made to policy ACD, religious observations. We have the first reading of revisions being made to policy JHG, child abuse and neglect reporting. We have the first reading of revisions being made to policy JICH, drug use by students. And yep, that's Stop actually being anytime. changed, yeah, to controlled title of that is being changed. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, we have the first reading of revisions being made to policy JJB activity scheduling. We have the first reading of revisions being made to policy um, JJBA district recognition of non-school sports. We have the first reading of revisions being made to policy JJBAB, district recognition of non-school academic clubs. I just want to mention here a, a big thanks to Mike Jewett for sitting in with us on all of these um, uh, policies that incorporate the activities and the uh, um, the non-school sports and all those things. It was very nice of him to come and I appreciate him giving his input on those. Thank you for that work. All right, and then we have a set on notification. Um, so we have notification of review of policy JHFB, Student Safety Patrol. We have notification of review of policy JJD, Fundraising and Fund Management. We have notification of review of policy JNA, loaning of textbooks. We have notification of review of policy JO, student records. And we have notification of review of policy JOA, student recruitment. And again, student recruitment is not for sports or anything, it's for um, whether it's the military or colleges or, or places like that, allowing them to be. And that kind of concludes all of the policies that deal with the student. So we're okay. pretty excited. We've actually finished this, probably the largest section okay. of policies. Thank you. All right, we're moving on to our consent agenda. And I am looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda and the items in it. I so move. Moved by Deb and seconded by Wes. All right, and discussion, we're ready for the vote. All right, moving on to our action items this evening. All right, I am looking for a motion to approve our donated items. I would so move. Second. Moved by Teresa, seconded by Terry. I just also would like to add here, especially this time of year with Thanksgiving coming, a big thanks to all the uh, generous 
community groups like the Backpack Project and um, Project Joy and those kinds of things who aren't on our list every month for things, but they do give a lot of time and, and uh, everything to help yep. our learners in our district. So I, I'd like to just uh, publicly thank all those groups that do such things. Thank you. Great, we're ready for the vote. All right, I'm looking for a motion of approval of the bus bid. I would move to approve the bus bids. I will the bus bid. Yep, and I will second that. Moved by Teresa and seconded by Kelly. Discussion on that? Yeah, we'd love that. I could just give a brief update. I know yep, thank you. Nate had included some pictures of the, what the bus will look like. We did receive two bids. One was for a brand new 2023 bus, and that bid was for $353,600. And we received a, a bid for a uh, used 23 bus with about, right now it has about 9,300 miles. Probably estimated it could be, have between 15 and 20,000 when it's taken off of lease. And that was 326,000. And after reviewing the two, we're recommending it for the price difference, go with a new one. Have full warranty coverage. Uh, be much, much more reliable than the current used bus we have. Uh, the used bus has served us well in the past, but it's just time for a new one. My question was whether it was in the capital improvement budget. Okay. And Brian, do you want to just state the price difference? Um, approximately $28,000 difference between the new 23, 23, 23 bus with about zero miles and then the 23 used bus with about 15,000 miles ish. Right. Where does it come from, Brian, the bus? Where does it come from? Mitchell, right? Like out east somewhere? Do they drive it here and? I, they do drive it, so there will be some mileage. I don't know exactly where it comes okay. from, so I apologize. I don't know that, but I know it's uh, the the place it's coming Miller. from is from Miller. Okay. Yeah. Foreman Sales in Miller, South okay. Dakota. Sorry, but yeah, and I wish I knew where. I, I apologize. I don't know where it's okay. manufactured at. Thanks. Hmm? Yeah, they'll drive it directly from the plant up to Brookings. Okay. Any additional questions or discussion? Okay. All right, we're ready for the vote, Brian. All right, Wes, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Or anyone else. Looking for a second. I'll second it. Okay. Moved by Wes, seconded by Teresa. Brian, we're ready. You still got time to vote if you haven't. Thank you, everyone. Well, I didn't get to an hour, but it's been my goal. Hour five.